My name is David Corey with the Emotional Intelligence Training Company, and I want to welcome all of you here to our webinar today. We're going to be talking about making the leap from independent or individual contributor to people leader. Many of you have been in the position where you have made that leap. Many of you are working with managers or, or uh, leaders within organizations who want to make that leap from independent contributor or individual contributor to people leader. Uh, and so let's, let's look at that and understand that through the lens of emotional intelligence and what might you expect someone's EQ to be who's making that leap? What would you expect someone's EQ to be after they've made the leap? So we're going to take a look at this and um, I'm going to try to be brief and, uh, and then take your questions. Uh, as you know, you know, we, um, uh, or as you may know, uh, our company specializes in this area of emotional intelligence and this is our 20th year of service and so we're excited about celebrating our 20th anniversary and uh, so we have uh, lots of uh, wonderful uh, ideas planned for the year and um, we'll tell you a little bit more about those as we proceed. So making the leap to, um, uh, to uh, with, with respect to the um, uh, to job role. Uh, and so at this time, I'd just like to find out a little bit more about who we've got on the call so far. So let's, uh, let's take a look. We've got, uh, as, as is usual with webinars, we have a lot more people registered than are joining us live, uh, which is absolutely fine. Let's, uh, let's go to our first poll. And I'm just going to ask you to check all that apply. So for those of you who, uh, who are joining us live, just check off which of the following apply to you. Have you taken the EQI certification course? Or are you primarily a coach or an HR professional or both or a manager, recruiter? Are you with a small company, medium company, large company? Uh, and are you involved as a trainer or as a consultant? These are all useful and helpful things to know. So it looks like most people are, um, uh, are HR professionals. We've got some people who are also involved in coaching. We've got a few e EQI certified people. Uh, we've got some uh, people, most people are with small and medium sized companies. We've got some trainers and some consultants as well. So, so all of that is uh, of course really great. And uh, just, so just quickly, just want to, um, I uh, want to take a look at our agenda. So I'm going to introduce this issue. What's the problem with making the leap? What, why do people have problems? What, what are those problems? How is EQ the solution? Uh, and I'll do a quick summary for you, and then we'll, we'll open it up to questions. All right. In terms of the problem, the problem is the difficulty making the leap from uh, individual contributor who has a particular uh, knowledge base and a, a particular skill set. Uh, often these are technical roles that uh, where, where individuals, uh, like you see in the picture, uh, individuals have a great deal of technical expertise and they are technical specialists. Uh, and why the difficulty in making the leap? Well, the one of the reasons, and there are probably many, are that the EQ competencies required to be an effective individual contributor are not necessarily the same as for a people manager. So we're going to use those, those uh, short abbreviations, uh, IC for individual contributor or independent contributor, PM for people manager. And uh, one of the reasons that, uh, that I think might be at play here, and certainly some of the literature bears this out, is the stereotype of the introverted thinking uh, personality preference. Uh, and and the, these people are sometimes more comfortable with technology and technical, using technical skills than they are with other people. Uh, now that's a generalization and a stereotype and certainly not all people who are good technically uh, have difficulty or issues dealing with people or uh, even wanting to be with people. But of course that stereotype exists and, and it does bear out uh, and it bears out um, it, in my experience. It may bear out in your experience as well, but uh, so, okay, so what do we do about that or how can we help or support people to better make that leap? Well, I think one of the, the ways that we can understand this better is, is looking at and understanding some of the EQ competencies that allow someone to be proficient as an 
individual contributor. Uh, and then look at what the shift might be to shift to being an, an effective people manager. Uh, and so uh, as many of you know, or as many of you um, uh, may have, again, become certified to, to use this wonderful tool, the Emotional Quotient Inventory, it's based on this model of emotional intelligence, which as one of the three leading models in the world, it is one of the most useful and one of the most applicable for workplace uh, performance improvement, uh, because we've got these 15 different areas grouped into five categories, which can really help us to uh, zero in on and pinpoint where uh, people might have strengths and certainly leverage those strengths. Uh, and then also where people might zero in and look at areas that they could improve for greater effectiveness. And that's kind of how we work is, is again, leveraging strengths, and helping people to improve in various areas to increase effectiveness as leaders, as uh, team members, uh, et cetera. So here's the model uh, and uh, draw your attention to a couple of things, one of which is self-regard, which plays a bit of a role here in making the leap from, uh, again, from individual contributor to people manager. Uh, independence is another thing that uh, plays a role, uh, as well as emotional expression, uh, assertiveness might as well. Interpersonal relationships plays a role. And we're going to look at and understand these uh, in a little bit of a, of a deeper way here moving forward. Okay, so what makes an excellent individual contributor? Well, a high score in independence. Uh, and you can see in terms of this one excerpt or screenshot taken from a sample leadership report that the, this, this uh, individual with a score at 119 is more than one standard deviation above the mean, 15 being the standard deviation. So we, what we know is that anything above a standard deviation is significant. Uh, and then you can see the interpretive text uh, that, that, uh, that we see there the EQI being published by MHS Assessments, uh, and they've done a fantastic job of creating useful uh, suggested interpretation here. It says, Ms. Sample, being independent means you are capable of feeling, thinking, and working on your own. Uh, and this, they, it goes on to say that this is a critical skill that, uh, that all great leaders have in common. Well, let's go back for a moment and think this person is not necessarily a, a leader with positional authority. Uh, and so what, uh, what that means for this person is that they're used to doing things on their own, getting results on their own, relying on their own uh, skill and knowledge. Uh, and so then the, uh, some of these other statements down here that are highlighted here, say you're comfortable providing direction, working on your own. You can work without de emotional dependency on others. Don't require their uh, reassurance. You, you accept responsibility for your decisions, knowing that at times people will disagree with you, uh, all of which makes for an, an excellent and effective individual contributor. Uh, and what's interesting is that we sometimes see that, uh, that the self-regard of, of individual contributors is, is healthy and adequate prior to making the leap, but then we see an interesting thing happen when they make the leap. So let's take a look at, uh, at what happens uh, or, or what can happen uh, when people make that leap to people manager. Uh, so here we see an excerpt from someone who has made the leap. And what we see is that their self-regard and their self-actualization actually took a bit of a hit. Uh, how, why is that or, or how could that be? Well, you can imagine that someone has, uh, that is confident in their job as an ind individual contributor uh, and they, they know their job because they know their technical skill level and they, they know the work and so their self-regard is adequate. Then they get placed in the position of being accountable for the performance of others uh, and uh, account, uh, accountable and responsible for supporting others in their work and that's not necessarily their skill set and so that's where the struggle comes in and that's what affects their self-regard and their self-confidence now, with respect to self-actualization, this is interesting because um, uh, this can also take a hit because they're feeling very fulfilled 
as an independent independent contributor uh, because again they know their job and they like their their technical skill set and they're utilizing that at, in getting the work done and that feels good to them and they're enjoying that and so in terms of uh, the pursuit of meaning and self improvement that all fits for them now they're in a bit of a different role. Uh, in supporting other people and the self-actualization is not quite there yet because it's not as fulfilling because they're not as proficient at it. Now, emotional self-awareness, you can see in the self-perception composite, this may or may not be affected. Uh, and, and what we do is we, we encourage them to tap into that emotional self-awareness to give them cues and to guide them uh, in their new role. Uh, and, and really what we do as coaches and as managers of these uh, individuals is to remind them of their strengths. They, they have all this technical knowledge. That's, uh, they're, they're, they are technically proficient. That may be why they've been promoted into their role uh, as a people manager. Uh, and, uh, and we remind them of that. They have a lot to offer. They should be confident where, with respect to the work. Then it's just about learning more about how to support others and how to, how how to leverage those relationships and, and develop those relationships with team members uh, and increase their, their working efficiency uh, through, through other people rather than, than that self-reliance. Let's uh, take a look at the self-expression composite. Uh, and, uh, and really what the self-expression uh, composite suggests to us is that, and, and again, for those of you who don't know, the gold bar along the top of the bar graph that you see there uh, is the range of scores of the top 50% of a group of high-performing leaders. These leaders were identified as high performers by their managers, and then what, what MHS did was they gave this group of, uh, of leaders the EQI, and another measure which measures leadership in four, uh, four different uh, competency areas, one of which is authenticity, uh, coaching, insight and innovation uh, and they did they've done a really nice job of laying these out uh, laying out eq scores in relation to this transformational leadership model to both teach individuals about leadership and what it's all about uh, and also to show them where they have strengths and where they may need to improve so here we see that uh, with respect to emotional expression what you can see is that at 98 that score, that's a standard score, which means that it has been compared to a representative sample of a regional population, in this case, the North American population, and it's right around the mean, which is 100. Uh, and so what we can say about a score of 98 with respect to emotional expression is it's right around where most people in the, in the population score. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, with respect to leadership, what we see with the gold bar standard is that there's a higher expectation on leaders to have a greater emotional expression score. Uh, why is that? What's, what's that about? Well, what we, what we can say is that emotional expression is the way that we become known. It's the way that we develop trust. It's the way that we connect with others. So by letting people know what's going on, uh, beneath our surface and you know we use the iceberg metaphor and talk about what's going on beneath the surface as critical and important for connection with others we don't connect above the surface we connect below the surface and we only connect with uh, with what is shared by others so um, and what's interesting is that we don't necessarily trust what we don't know so unless people are allowed to get to know us and we encourage this then they have the opportunity to trust us. Uh, so, so emotional expression becomes critical in this new role as people manager because we need that connection. We need that relationship with others. Now, assertiveness becomes important as well. And you can see that with a score of 101, it's right around the mean. And so there's no general issue with it. However, it is lower than that leadership range where the expectation is higher, that people managers are communicating their feelings, their beliefs in a non-offensive way. They are confronting poor performance. They're not afraid of that. They're, 
they they uh, are courageous when it comes to emotions and uh, and potentially difficult situations or uh, potentially uncomfortable situations. Uh, leaders move into those spaces and address those issues. Uh, they don't avoid them and they don't deny them, which you could possibly do as an individual contributor and get away with that. Now, as a people manager, you have much more accountability and responsibility to address those issues uh, and, uh, and be assertive about that. Again, you, you see independence, and, and this is a different individual who has a uh, still uh, a score uh, at 113, which um, is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying a high independence score is a bad thing. What I'm saying is that uh, what we want to see is a bit of a balance between independence and what we'll see in the next slide, which is uh, interpersonal relationship. So how to, how to support people in this, in this position, in this situation? How do we, uh, what, what would we encourage them to do? Well, we would encourage emotional honesty uh, and encourage that, uh, that emotional expression. Uh, for example, uh, a new manager might say something like, I'm new at this and I'm concerned about doing it well. Uh, and and that's, that's the honest truth. I, you know, I, this is a new role for me. Uh, I was an individual contributor and now I'm uh, responsible for, uh, for, for people management and, uh, and that's different and new for me and, uh, and I'm learning. Uh, and uh, again, honesty is the best policy and we encourage honesty in communication, and honesty in relationships. And so if something is, something's up, something's there, speak to it, put, put it in words and, uh, and take away the, uh, uh, the guesswork and the assumptions around that. Okay, so again, so there may have been some skills that, uh, that again, may not have been encouraged as I see. And you'll notice, you'll notice the tentative language that we use again. And some, the, the, these are based on some of our experiences in coaching and working with individual contributors who want to become people managers. Uh, and uh, this is also based on some interviews and discussion with other consultants who are working in this area. Um, particularly, the, and, and the person who gave me the idea for the webinar is a person who works in a large national uh, telecommunications company, uh, and she came and took the EQI certification course with us, and then one of her first tasks after certification was to do 80 debriefs in their high potential program, largely with people who are in this position uh, of moving from uh, individual contributor to people manager and, and at different points within the transition. And she brought this up, this idea that uh, in some cases uh, people struggled with uh, seeing that their independence was less of a strength in, as a people manager and that, that interpersonal relationships was, uh, was something that, that they needed to leverage and they needed to develop and enhance. So here's a, a, a typical um, uh, EQ profile for the interpersonal composite scale, which consists of interpersonal relationships. So you can see here in this situation, this person scored 87. Uh, so a score of 87 is almost one standard deviation below the mean. Uh, and so we, we, we are concerned about that in a general sort of way, but also in relationship to the leadership bar, you can see that there is quite a gap there. And so we really want to encourage people who are in the position of scoring lower and perhaps struggling or having a difficult time with, uh, with developing relationships and developing relationships of good quality to consider how they might go about doing that. So again, through coaching and uh, and possibly training and the provision of other resources we want to support and help people to understand more about what we mean by relationships and what is a relationship and how do you how do you develop a relationship that's characterized by trust loyalty commitment and those those kinds of uh, vulnerability, uh, th those um, uh, characteristics. So the people manager role requires effective working relationships and, uh, and we can develop and enhance those by leveraging some of our other EQ competencies, namely emotional expression, as I mentioned. So let people get to know you. Let people know what's going on for you emotionally. What, what are you thinking about? What are you focusing on? Uh, and then empathy, which here is here in the interpersonal composite. And what, you, what we know about empathy is that allows us to focus on uh, and appreciate 
what's going on for other people. Uh, and when we do that, we can measurably improve relationships by literally, uh, not literally, figuratively putting ourselves in other people's shoes. It's a great old saying, and it works very well to remind us to put ourselves in their shoes, look at things from their perspective, imagine what it must be like to have this new manager who was a very effective and proficient individual contributor. Now they're in a new role and it's gonna take some time for them to develop their proficiency, to get up to speed, to be a good people manager. Uh, and, um, uh, and so what's it like to be a, a direct report in that situation? What, what, what must it be like to be them? Uh, and and so, so to use your empathy skills to, to, in order to do that. Uh, finally, social responsibility comes to play here because we need to go from being an individual contributor where our focus is getting our own work done to how can we support and help others. So that social responsibility is going to help us to focus and zero in on who needs my help. How can I support them? Uh, the idea of servant leadership. Robert Greenleaf from this, uh, his famous essay from, from uh, the 70s, uh, Servant Leadership. How can we serve those people and provide them with what they need in order to do their job in the most effective way? And that's where social responsibility comes in and plays, uh, plays a role in that idea, that concept of servant leadership, serving others. Uh, so what's new for an individual contributor is that they are, while they were used to getting work done on their own, now they have to get work done through relationships. Uh, and so interpersonal relationships is going to be something that they will need to embrace. They will need to, uh, they will need to develop their skills again. Uh, and, uh, and that's going to be uh, very important to them moving forward. Okay, so just a reminder uh, of one of the things that you can do to help and support people who are making this leap from individual contributor to people manager is the use of the EQI 2.0 leadership report. Uh, I I can't stress enough how useful and helpful this is to, to help people to understand what the foundational skills are, the 15 EQ competencies, and then how those 15 EQ competencies relate to the four pillars of uh, transformational leadership that are found here in this slide. Authenticity, uh, helping people to understand that it, it is about being uh, uh, being an, uh, an authentic leader that is moral and fair and transparent. And, uh, and those are the people that we want to be with. Those are the people that we're attracted to. Uh, as I'm fond of saying that we human beings have, uh, have quite the BS detectors. And we know when people are trying to be something, then they're, uh, something that they're not, uh, when, they're, uh, when, they're, when they're not being, in, when they're not being moral, when they're perhaps they're taking shortcuts or they're, um, they're cutting corners. Uh, that makes us mistrust people, uh, and it, it affects trust in a, in a uh, very negative way. And so how can we demonstrate moral and fair behavior, uh, that which uh, causes us to, be, uh, to trust and to ultimately become loyal and committed uh, to a leader? Uh, coaching, this, this of course, is a way of interacting uh, with direct reports uh, and, and also peers to support them. Uh, and use our social responsibility and our empathy and our relation and our interpersonal relationships to develop those relationships. Uh, and insight is about emotional expression. How do we how do we share our inspiration and our passion for the job and for the work that we do so that, that others catch that and it becomes a contagion throughout the organization to raise the level uh, of, of organizational effectiveness. Uh, and then finally, innovation. How can we um, uh, break through the, the usual way of doing business and, uh, and, and be innovative? And that requires various of our EQ competencies uh, in order to, uh, uh, to be optimistic that there is a better way, that we can always come up with a better way and to, uh, to, to use our problem solving and decision making in ways that allow us to, to, uh, to take risks, et cetera. Uh, and um, uh, so, so, so this model is fantastic and it's right in the leadership report and we can use it to teach and, and help and guide others. 
Okay, so in terms of us uh, to, to just summarize this very brief introduction to what is a very broad area, some uh, individual, individual contributors may have adapted their EQ to be effective as an individual contributor, but it puts them at a bit of a disadvantage as a people manager. And of course, uh, this is a, uh, a broad generalization, uh, but it's also an interesting kind of phenomenon that, that, that maybe you've experienced and certainly we've experienced in our, in our work with people in organizations. Uh, we, they may need to achieve a better balance between independence and interpersonal relationships and making that transition from getting work done on your own to getting, done, uh, to getting work done through and with others and developing that true team effectiveness. Uh, may also need to consider development in emotional self-awareness to really tap into and utilize the wealth of information that comes from our emotions and our emotional responses to the situations that we find ourselves in. Uh, finally, our empathy for others. We're, you know, we're all going through this transition together and having empathy for, for others is going to, again, help with developing those interpersonal relationships. It's going to help with, um, uh, with communication. Uh, and finally, social responsibility. How, how can we go from being more concerned about getting our own work done to uh, how others are getting their work done and that, that concept of servant leadership? leadership. Finally, with the right coach, mentor, training, and focus on the most appropriate EQ competencies, I believe that any independent contributor who wants to can make the leap to being an effective people manager. But of course, it requires intention and it requires effort. So that's the presentation that I wanted to share with you. And I'm really happy and interested to take your questions now. And we've got a couple of different ways to share questions, one of which is through the chat box. So please type in your question there uh, and um, uh, that is that's actually the best way so if you don't mind just please type your questions in there and let me know what those questions are uh, or uh, use the the Q&A box as well uh, over here and we'll uh, we'll have a bit of a discussion about this so so I'm really interested to hear your thoughts what uh, uh, what are your comments or observations about what I've said so far um, and maybe what's what's your experience oh here's we got a question here how does uh, low flexibility how does low flexibility affect leadership potential yeah, that's um, uh, a very interesting idea because on the one hand, uh, you know, we we do have this correlate this interesting correlation between kind of a, a more traditional approach to leadership, uh, which is a kind of uh, a little bit more autocratic or authoritarian in style, and with with that style of leadership, we kind of expect to see a little bit lower flexibility. The idea that you know this is this is how we're doing things. This is the direction we're going, and we're not veering off that that direction. So there's that stick to uh, that that we sometimes see, uh, and then of course low flexibility fits with the with the the notion um, uh, of the bull in the china shop leader, uh, and uh, uh, and that. Uh, it is, of course, very much about traditional leadership. And we're, we're evolving away from that traditional model of autocratic or authoritarian leadership and moving to a more collaborative, inclusive, and participative model of leadership, which requires a different approach. And it's much more relationship-based. It's much more flexible to allow for diversity. Uh, and, uh, and that's what we want to do um, moving forward. And we want to help uh, in, in certainly individual contributors to understand that that's what we're evolving towards. That's the future of the organization is a more collaborative, transparent, uh, flexible approach. Uh, which, uh, which again, honors diversity and recognizes that diversity is going to contribute to a better outcome, uh, that we don't all have the same views and perspectives in the room, but we have a diverse represent, representation of perspectives. So thanks for that question. Uh, let's see, um, what, what other questions or comments do you have? I'm, I'm really interested to, uh, to hear your, uh, your ideas. Uh, you know, um, people uh, generally want to know, you know, how, how do these other 15 competencies relate and, uh, and, and how do they, um, uh, how do they, 
Okay, so here's we got we have another question here. So uh, your thoughts around organizations that are intolerant of emotional expression and authenticity. Uh, I consider myself emotionally evolved, yet find few corporations who support notions of EQ, except perhaps on a placard in their entranceway. And uh, yes, thanks so much for the question. And and really, you know, what you're talking about is the fact that that some organizations are entrenched in a traditional model of leadership, which, which doesn't necessarily value emotional expression and authenticity. So, uh, it, it, so but, but I think what, uh, uh, how we transform organizations is by developing the individual leadership abilities of, of each individual. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you are, you know, an emotionally evolved individual in, a, in an organization that doesn't support notions of EQ, then it is about helping them to understand that, that they, both the world is changing and organiza organizations need to also change to keep pace. Uh, so organizations such as, and I, I mention this frequently because I think it's, uh, it's a great message, uh, organizations like Google, Nike, Amazon, uh, Microsoft are, have all embraced EQ and, and, uh, and are, uh, have included the EQI in their leadership development programs because it uh, provides such a fantastic roadmap for, for helping uh, organizations to intentionally evolve and, and, and move forward. So, so what I can say to, to your question about, um, uh, about organizations that are intolerant uh, is education you know they they need to understand the business case they need to understand why it is in their best interests to pay attention to emotional intelligence and eq uh, and uh, we are our, our organization is working with the most technical of organizations engineering organizations oil and gas organizations uh, on the development of um, uh, of eq and the inclusion of eq and emotional intelligence into their leadership development programs so that it's not just a placard in the entrance way that that it's actually lived and the pe when people start to experience um, the benefits of having real relationships and and uh, and experiencing authenticity rather than uh, rather than uh, fake or uh, uh, or or what people think they want to hear uh, then I think you're gonna win some converts and again it's a it's a process of evolution rather than transformation. However, I have seen organizations that have transformed uh, and, um, uh, and they, they've transformed because they've gotten the most senior leadership in the organization to buy into the concept of emotional intelligence and really have a desire for trust and loyalty and commitment um, uh, and, uh, and inspiration and motivation to rule. And when that's your goal, then of course you need to, to look at and, and understand more uh, about emotional intelligence. Uh, relationship between self-regard, problem solving, and stress tolerance. Absolutely. We, all of our 15 competencies measured by the EQI are interrelated and have a very interesting and unique in, uh, interconnectedness. Uh, and of course, um, you know, self-regard is, is related with self-confidence. And so we want uh, self-confident problem solvers. Uh, and then we want people to enter into problem solving. And the way that problem solving is an EQ competency is it's about uh, it's about recognizing and acknowledging and integrating all of the emotions that are involved in problem solving. With that comes some stress as well. And so stress tolerance being that third one mentioned is going to be critical and important that we are able to tolerate stress and that we acknowledge and understand. A lot of this is about awareness. So, you know, going back to the organization, they may not be uh, aware uh, of, of their entrenchment uh, and their uh, bias against EQ. Uh, so it's about becoming aware because with awareness comes choice. Okay, uh, we got a question here. I could describe any research that connects EI and business outcomes. Um, there's all kinds of, of um, uh, all kinds of research that connects that, 
And if you, e if you email me, david at eitrainingcompany.com, I will send you that research. We've got this one, um, uh, it's a bit of an older document now, but still relevant with nine case studies of nine organizations, many of which you will recognize that have made significant investments into emotional intelligence programming and using the EQI. And uh, it talks about their return on investment. And so we use those uh, significantly. Then we have another newer document, uh, which was created in a partnership between the, um, the, uh, the, the Human, um, Human Capital Institute and MHS. And, and that one, again, outlines some of the more recent research uh, 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 on ROI. Um, another, uh, another question, I'm convinced of the value, but how do you frame the ROI quantitatively? That is in dollar figures. Plenty of example organizations, but senior leaders need to be convinced within their own frame of reference. Absolutely. And the way that we do that is uh, we, we show how emotional intelligence makes or saves organizations money. And there's lots of different ways that, that uh, emotional intelligence training does that. One way is by increasing efficiency. When you've got people working together more effectively uh, and, and having uh, relationships of meaning and really having each other's backs and trusting each other and supporting each other, then they're working more efficiently and that, that Im improves productivity. It also reduces uh, industrial accidents. If that is a concern, it also avoids uh, can avoid grievances as well, which costs organizations money. So it's whatever those pain points are for an organization and then showing how with the introduction and the development of emotional intelligence competencies uh, based on the EQI that, uh, that organizations can actually see a bottom line um, difference. So it's, uh, it's uh, pointing out all, all of those various studies. So I'm happy to send that, that information to you. Uh, next, next question. Empathy sometimes goes down in new leaders, not up, which is fascinating. Often it's because they're working on their assertiveness. Absolutely. So, so we do sometimes see an interesting change. And of course, with the EQI, it's a snapshot in time. So, uh, so what we see is we see it at different points. And so if you do the EQ, if you take the, if an individual takes the EQI before they make the move to people manager, that, then you sometimes see one thing. And then once they made the move, you see another thing as they, uh, as they uh, are working to, to, uh, to get their legs, to, to uh, find their, their place. And so, so it's true that occasionally when people, um, for our first people managers, sometimes, and, and particularly under stress, they sometimes resort to more autocratic ways of, uh, of dealing with people, and sometimes their empathy goes down, their assertiveness goes up, but then we want them to really find that balance as they work on and focus on developing relationships with others so that, um, uh, so that they are uh, finding the balance between assertiveness and empathy, which means that that assertiveness is received in the best possible way, and it lands well, and people understand the, what the standards are and what the required performance is or the, the desired performance and the required performance and 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 we can communicate that in a clear and direct way uh, that people understand so so that people know where, where they need to be and what they need to be doing okay so so I, I don't know if I answered your question or not I'm so happy to continue the, the conversations about these issues after the webinar uh, and uh, so thank you for all your questions and comments um, okay, so just going to switch over to a new box, and we've got uh, uh, question, suggestions for ways to improve the drop in confidence and self-regard after a transition from being an individual contributor to a, a people manager. Uh, absolutely, you know, they, we, we're often working with people in a, in a one-to-one -one kind of situation, in a coaching situation. Uh, and again, you know, I mentioned in the slide presentation that one of the ways uh, to improve and help with self-regard and confidence is to remind people about all that they know. Uh, and they are often subject matter experts. They're very effective and proficient in their field. Uh, and so, you know, we can remind them of that. And then that what they need is they need some, possibly some instruction. They need to improve their ability with respect to, uh, with respect to relationships and realize that they can do it. And, and it's really just a different way of seeing the job, again, from uh, doing it themselves to doing it with others. So, and that once they begin and, and people, and that, that starts to uh, be effective for them, then their self-regard and their confidence comes back and they realize they can do it. 
Uh, emotional burnout question question mark hot to handle um, we uh, it, it is it's stressful and it's difficult and I think what you mean by emotional burnout is uh, is um, when people reach the end of the Yerkes Dodson stress performance curve uh, and uh, it's something that we that we work on in in training uh, we help people to understand where they are on the curve and and you know the curve uh, it's a bell curve where there's an optimal amount of stress that we that, that we thrive under and then it becomes too much and, and again, if individual contributors are left to their own devices and they're not su properly supported to become a people manager, then of course they're gonna struggle, they're gonna be stressed out, and they could, they could burn out as well. But we wanna help them to avoid burnout by teaching them strategies and tactics to deal with stress and, and, and help them along. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what good leadership is all about, is ensuring that new leaders, leaders who are just getting, finding their legs and, and getting into leadership are, are supported. Uh, next question, as an HR professional, how do you make the business case for EQ to your leadership team? That's a great question. We get it all the time. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and, and I've got a, I've got a quick answer and I've got a several hour answer, uh, because I have these conversations all the time with HR professionals. Uh, and, uh, so the short answer is that, uh, that you bring in some of these case studies and some of this research and, uh, and you, uh, help people to understand the business case, but by, by pointing out the fact that we can't afford the issues that are created by a lack of EQ, uh, because as you as you all know, uh, many of the issues within organizations are created because of someone or some groups difficulty with EQ, with uh, with developing trust, with um, uh, with having uh, supportive relationships, etc. Uh, but once a senior leadership individuals understand more about the business case for EQ uh, and see how it can actually help organizations to, re to be competitive, to move forward, to uh, implement strategy. Often we're called in to work with senior leadership teams once they have a wonderful strategy, but they're not implementing. Uh, because often that implementation of, str of, of strategy uh, requires well-developed EQ skills to, again, build relationships uh, and communicate clearly and directly, et cetera. So, uh, so that's the short answer. Uh, I've got all kinds of views on, uh, on HR and their relationship with organizations. And, and I, know, I know people at both ends of the spectrum. I know people who, who command attention in an HR role, and I know people who, uh, who really require the development of their own leadership skills in order to have a voice within an organization and to be able to speak up assertively and, and make the business case. So, so there's a lot of, your, your question brings up a lot of different issues, uh, and um, yeah, I I'd love to continue the conversation later on or even support and, uh, and, and guide, maybe provide some tips as well at a later time. Um, so what, what else uh, can I tell you right now or, or, um, uh, or, or have I answered all your questions? Uh, again, you know, these are, uh, these are issues that, uh, that we love to wade into and talk about and discuss and come up with solutions for. Uh, and we like to work, and, uh, work with and, and support people and, and really partner uh, with, our, with our clients to, to help them to achieve uh, whichever, whichever goals they're, they're trying to achieve. Um, okay, so so the the questions have slowed down, and so I think I'm going to wrap up at that point. So so thank you so much for for uh, all of your wonderful questions. I'm going to just to have a closing slide here and and say to thank you for joining us today. We're offering a hundred dollar off coupon, so a hundred dollars off a registration of for, for any of our courses. Uh, and uh, and if you want that hundred dollar off coupon, just mention it when you're registering, and we'll make sure that um, uh, that we reduce uh, your your invoice. Um, and and uh, just to to uh, to build on the idea of our 20th anniversary year throughout the year for all of our newsletter list subscribers. So you have to subscribe to our newsletter list. We can't subscribe you, of course, but if you're on our newsletter list, 
I will be offering 20th anniversary limited time special offers throughout the year. These are our uh, huge discounts on some of our courses and programs. And, and again, just to remind you of some of our publicly offered courses and programs, certification courses, Mastering AI Competencies, Heart and Science of Leadership for Women. We've got new dates coming up. Uh, and we have this, uh, we have our, our writing for emotional intelligence course with, with new dates. Uh, and then of course, if you want to take the EQI 2.0 or the EQ 360 and, and get some coaching to improve your own EQ, we are happy to talk with you about doing that as well. So thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate you being here and we hope to see you on a future webinar. So at that point, I'm going to bid you a, uh, a wonderful day. Uh, and uh, and say goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.